Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. And in today's episode of The Health Fix, we are talking about how to stop birth control without a struggle. Now, how did this topic come about? This is actually a request from one of my folks in my Facebook group. My Facebook group is Find Your Health Fix. And I will take suggestions and questions. As you know, if you've been listening recently, I have been answering a lot of questions. And this one is a good one because... I get asked all the time, hey doc, is birth control even healthy for me? Hey doc, I want to get pregnant. How do I stop the birth control? What do I need to do? So I'm here today to talk all about this. But first and foremost, before we get into that, I got to talk about what the heck is birth control anyway, because it sets you up for understanding what types of things you might be dealing with when you come off of the birth control. So there are a variety of different types of birth control. There's the oral types, there's patches, there's the NuvaRing, there's the mini pill, there's also the implants, and then there's injectables like Depo-Provera. They're all relatively going to do similar things, but they have different ingredients. So your birth control pill your Nuva ring and your patches are all very similar. They're a combination of the pseudo hormones. Now note that I say pseudo hormones. And the reason I say this is because they don't look like our natural hormones. They're not bioidentical like what we use with perimenopause and menopause. These are pseudo hormones. They look different to the body. So that's why we do get side effects with these things. So the pseudo hormones that look like estrogen and look like progesterone in that combination. So if we're doing a pill, we're doing a patch, or we're doing a NuvaRing, these guys, we have to help the body kind of figure out what to do once these come out of the system. And I'll be talking about that in a little bit later, but the the ethanol estradiol and the Levon <laughs> this one's hard for me, Levonorgestrel, this is your your progestin, so your pseudo progesterone that is in the birth control, these guys have effect on the body that work to thin the lining of the uterus. So we can't implant any eggs in there. So basically it, it, it keeps your soil from being nice and fertile for pregnancy. And then we have the, the issue with all of the pseudo estrogen, like symptoms. So what are these birth control pseudo hormones doing in our body? Well, they're basically shutting down our natural hormone production. And in the case of the progestins, which is that levonorgestrel, that guy is ultimately thinning your uterine lining so nothing can implant. So yeah, not so great, but we can work with that once we stop these guys. And most of the time I'm having folks think about, okay, if you're going to stop your birth control, you want to think about it at least a month in advance, not just stop and then try to figure it out. I really want you kind of thinking like, okay, I need to start to work on getting my body healthy to help it produce natural hormones at least a month before you're going to come off of the birth control. Then you want three months after you've stopped the birth control to really dial things in. And and that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today in more specifics. But before I do that, I want you to think about what is going to be out of balance quite possibly prior to stopping that birth control because we have the patches, we have the NuvaRing, we have the oral birth control. Those are very similar in terms of they have two pseudo hormones in them. You have the ethanol estradiol, which is the pseudo estrogen, and then you have the levonor or lev. I have such a hard time with this word. Levonorgestrel, which is the progestin, which is a pseudo progesterone. So those two guys are in the NuvaRing, the patch, and oral birth control. So now you have a pseudo estrogen and a pseudo progestin. Pseudo progesterone um, is really what it is. Progestin is what we call it. Pseudo progesterone is what it is. And it behaves a little bit more like testosterone in that case. It's interesting. Now, mini pill and the Norplant and the Depo Provera. So, mini pill, just the pill uh, that's called mini pill, which ultimately just means you're taking progestins on their own. So, pseudo progesterones. And like I said, mimics kind of testosterone effect in the body instead of being mimicking more of a progesterone effect in the body. And ultimately, 
what it does is thins your uterine lining so that you can't implant. And, and that's kind of crazy. So we have to work with li lining and, and boosting that up a little bit more on the folks that are on things like the mini pill. Also the, the Depo Provera, which are the shots or folks that are doing the implants, the Norplant, things of that nature. So we want to be thinking lining there. Now, it's very common for folks who have suspected endometriosis or post endometriosis surgeries to be put on the mini pill because it does not contain estrogen. So what are we doing here thinning the lining? What does estrogen do? Thicken linings for us. So we want to be thinking about if you're going for pregnancy, we need to be thinking about how to balance those estrogens out for you because obviously we don't want to be pushing a whole bunch of estrogenic herbs and things of that nature after you've just come off of an endometriosis surgery or after you've just controlled endometriosis using progestins. So this is a thing to be thinking about. Now, now that we've talked about birth control and the fact that birth control shuts off your hormone production, and literally that's what it does. It puts you more or less into menopause with these pseudo hormones. We have to think about how are we going to reboot your hormones? And in that case of rebooting your hormones, we have to think about what was your period like before you started using birth control? Because if you know what your period was like before, because chances are for a lot of people we're looking at, oh, I went on birth control because I had bad acne. I went on birth control because I had heavy periods. I went on you know, birth control because my PMS was all over the place. These are real things that are going to come back when you take your body off of the birth control. Now, are they going to come back with a, a vengeance? I can't say that for sure. But there are things to think about. So when you're going, okay, I'm going to stop birth control, you got to start journaling. All right, what happened? You got to think back when you first got your period and as time developed before you stopped the period as it was known <laughs> with birth control, you got to know, okay, what was it like before? And the reason I'm saying what was it like before is because your period bleeds are not real bleeds. That's just withdrawal of medicine. Like literally when you're on birth control and you stop bleeding, you're, you're not getting a real period. That's withdrawal bleeding. Your body's like, oh, I don't have these pseudo hormones that keep me in a menopausal, not making hormone state. So I should make, I should make some blood. I should have a period. It's not real. It's not real. So you don't want to judge those. You want to judge what you were experiencing before you started the birth control. Now, of course, there are side effects from cycling that maybe we'll have some cramps. Maybe we'll feel bloaty, those kind of things. It's hard to say if you're going to experience that after the birth control because that may be a sign of the withdrawal bleeding from the birth control. So keep that in mind. And, and withdrawal bleeding from withdrawing from either the ethanol estradiol or the levonorgestrel. So go back, go way back and make some notes as to like, what do I remember about my period? If you have any family members that are still alive, mom, ask mom, like what happened? These are big things for you to kind of nail down because you're going to go back to having some of these things. If you had say a painful period that was really heavy and that's why you stopped birth control, you likely have elevated estrogen in your body. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to be looking at, well, where's my estrogen at now? Do I do estrogen studies while someone's on birth control? I can if someone's having crazy symptoms. I would look at estrone and I would look at total estrogens in the blood. Or I would do a Dutch test and see what's going on. So a Dutch test is a dried urine test to assess what is happening. And you can look at the Dutch test while you're on birth control to see what's happening metabolically and give you a little sense of, okay, this is what I'm like on birth control. What m could we predict for off birth control? Things to think about. Now, the other big thing, if you had say lots of PMS, borderline PMDD. So this is PMDD is, is an advanced form of having PMS. These types of things, you definitely want to look at where your estrogen levels are, but you also want to look at where your progesterone levels are. And the way to test this is you want to be getting a, a test after ovulation if you're testing yourself. 
It's tricky to be testing your progesterone levels via serum when you just come off of birth control because you don't even know what your cycle's doing. And it's key to be testing your progesterone levels after you ovulate. So what I recommend in this case is really truly looking at the Dutch test because it's the best way to see what metabolizing of your hormones is doing. That way you kind of have a sense of what's happening. My personal opinion if you can wait and and ride it out a little bit, I would say at least get two to three periods, then do some testing to see what's going on. If things have not balanced themselves out, then yes, go ahead and, and get some testing to see what's going on with that progesterone to kind of help with the PMS types of symptoms. And don't worry, I'm going to get into that in terms of what to do and how to counterbalance that because there's hormone deficient or not hormone there is hormone deficiencies if you're not making enough progesterone, but there's also issues in terms of vitamins, minerals, things of that nature. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, the other big thing that I think is really important when you stop birth control is going and getting a pelvic exam, especially if you have heavy periods, because you want to know, do you have fibroids? Do you have growths within the uterine lining or within the uterus itself, the muscle tissue of the uterus that are contributing to these heavy bleeds. And when I'm talking about heavy bleeds, I'm talking about bleeds where you're you're going through a tampon an hour or even faster than that, or you're, you have heavy flow, but you stand up and all of a sudden you have like a gush and you're like, oh my God, Am I hemorrhaging? What is happening here? That's when you're like considering, do I have fibroids? The super heavy periods, that's a thing. So do get a pelvic exam, do get checked out there to make sure everything's okay. I also recommend that if you had polycystic ovarian syndrome, so you had cysts in the ovaries, you knew that cysts were rupturing and it was painful, so you were put on birth control, go get a pelvic exam to make sure that that is not currently happening. I actually really do like folks to get a pelvic exam when they come off of birth control just to have someone feel the ovaries, see what's going on in that case. Because you never know what all of these pseudo hormones have done to your body. I don't want to panic you. It's just something to get more information. Information is key. So that's something I absolutely have folks do. I also have folks before they come off of birth control, do some metabolic testing, meaning I want to know where's your magnesium levels at? What's going on in terms of your white blood cells, red blood cells? Are you anemic? What's going on in terms of your iron balance? So your ferritin, this is your iron stores in your, your liver, but also your B12, your folate. I want to know iron binding. I want to know iron binding capacity. So that's called TIBC and and there's UIBC, which is universal iron binding capacity. So I want to know these things. I want to know your iron saturation percent because this tells me what's going on with iron, but what's going on with oxygen balance, things of that nature in the body. I'd also like to know thyroid hormones, TSH. So that's from brain to thyroid signaling, free T3. So this is your free thyroid hormone floating in your body that gets to your cells, free T4. I also want to know, do you have any antibodies to your thyroid? So this is anti-TPO, so thyroid peroxidase. This is an antibody to the conversion of your T4 to T3. Has a lot to do with metabolism there. Also want to know, are there any antibodies to your thyroid itself? So thyroglobulin antibody. These are things for metabolism, like legit stuff you want to be looking at. You also want to look at something called CRP. C-reactive protein. This is something that can tell us about how much inflammation is in your body currently. Because if you're going to stop your birth control and you already have a lot of inflammation in the body, chances are you might have some period issues after this. So we need to de-inflame you, de-inflame that uterus. Because a lot of times we'll see symptoms that mimic polycystic ovarian syndrome that are actually inflammatory uterine conditions. So lots of things to be thinking about here. And I don't want you to panic. I'm doing this to help you to kind of get sequentially dialed in to know what you should be looking at. The other big thing for metabolism is looking at a fasting glucose. So what is your blood sugar fasting? But also what is your blood sugar looking at in terms of an A1C, your hemoglobin A1C? This is your blood sugar over time. I also recommend for anyone who's gaining weight and trying to figure out what in the world's going on, are you insulin resistant? You can get insulin resistant scoring tests. You can also get C-peptide tests. So check those things out. They're they're highly, 
highly important here. Now, another big thing is breast pain. A lot of po folks will have breast tenderness, metabolism will slow down. This could be an iodine deficiency. So this is another thing that I tend to check via blood iodine levels. Yes, the gold standard is urine, but it's a 24-hour urine test and carrying your, your urine around in a jug for 24 hours, not so much fun. I've done it. I've done all these things, but it's, it's not that much fun. So I, I really do like to look at all of these metabolic factors and you can do them via blood. You can ask your primary care doc. None of these are out of the ordinary. These are things that all of us could check. I'd also consider adding on a vitamin and mineral panel, maybe something from Vibrant Wellness or SpectraCell, which does the micronutrient analysis to know where your antioxidants, all your vitamins and all your minerals, especially vitamin B6 and B1, B2, B3, those guys are crucial for metabolism, but also B6 is crucial for hormone balance. So something to think about when you're, you're coming off of the birth control. Now, a lot of functional medicine docs, a lot of naturopathic doctors will, will test all these things and you wanna look for someone in your state to be able to do that. Now, acne, that's another big factor that folks struggle with before and coming off of birth control. And it sucks because, you know, if you're coming off of birth control and you're in your 30s, you're like, oh my God, I do not need acne now on top of everything else. So why does birth control help acne in the first place? Well, it stops the production of oil. So sebum, your protective oil on your layer of your face, it, it, it halts it. So not only is it stopping your hormone production, it's stopping the oil production for you. So this is something that, yes, you'll want to manage this. What do I do? Well, I usually will have folks working really hard on diet. Number one thing that causes acne is dairy because dairy is a, is a hormone going back into your body and it confuses the body. So you do want to be thinking about the hormone effect of dairy, but you also want to be thinking about, okay, what else can I do to control sebum topically? So there's internal and topically. There's great salicylic acid and benzoic acid products on the market. I, in fact, love the company is clinical. It is a clinical line. No, it's not 100% natural, but they're very diligent with their products in terms of helping with acne. And so I would recommend looking at a dermatologist's office or an esthetician who is, is actively using a clinical line for acne. Acne and, and is clinicals just happens to be one of my favorite lines. Now, in that case, you also want to make sure that you do have regular visits to a dermatologist, not to a dermatologist, to an esthetician, because you want to get that, that oil kind of balance on your face. And you also want to be using a steam to kind of open up your pores. So just cleansing that, that face of yours a little bit deeper and having that done and starting like literally, if you can start a couple months before you stop birth control for, for you acne prone folks, I highly recommend this because it's going to be key in that case. So keeping that in mind. Now, what are we doing in terms of, of diet and whatnot to prevent acne? It's the same as that anything anyone who's coming off birth control, I'm going to use the same kind of blanket, low inflammatory diet plan. So let's talk about that. So now I'm phasing into talking about what are we going to do prior to stopping the birth control and then ongoing as you're phasing off the birth control. So you want to set your body up for success. Like I mentioned, you want to be journaling. You want to know, okay, what was your period like before? And now as you're starting to transition to coming off the birth control, what are what's happening in general? What do your periods look like coming off the birth control? Once you stop it, you want to journal that. Now, of course, I'm going to back up and, and apologize for the confusion here. I want you to start a diet that is anti-inflammatory. I mean, ultimately, I hate the word diet. It's how you should eat. Let's just put it that way. It's, it's a calming, low inflammation diet that pretty much everyone should be doing. Get closest to nature. Now, the other big thing is, is, is dairy is the worst thing for anyone with a hormone imbalance. Soy, also not so great. It's super touted as being this great food for helping with perimenopause and menopause. I am here to say it jacks you up more. Don't, don't mess with it. Beer has hops in it, messes things up. So if you're a beer lover, we, we got to take that down for now. Alcohol of any type, really, 
messes with your hormones. So we got to get you off the alcohol or like just really minimize it here. That is absolutely stinking huge. The other big thing is all the processed foods and sugars. If you can get yourself to eating closest to nature, whole grains, fruits, veggies, lean meats, not too high on the fat component here. And I'm not talking about low fat diet I'm, and I'm not talking about eating low fat foods. What I'm talking about is keeping your fats in check. Look at portions. If you're gonna eat butter, don't go over a tablespoon in a serving. If you're gonna eat oils like avocado oil or coconut oil, teaspoon to two teaspoons when you're cooking with something. Watch how much salad dressing oils you're using. Make your own salad dressing. So it's a, it's really keeping things in check here. Eating closest to nature. I love, for simplicity, have folks go on a Whole30 based plan. If that helps you to have what you need in this case, let's do it. If you're like, I also need to lose weight in this doc, then I have a metabolic reset plan that can help you as well. You can always message me and we can, we can help you out in that department too. So really key for preventing any major issues related to inflammation. So acne, painful periods, PMS, PMDD, super just cystic ovary kind of stuff. We want to be thinking about no sugar, no processed flowers, or like as minimal as stinking possible. I know life happens. So thinking about realistically that. So the biggies are no sugar, no dairy, no alcohol, and cut out the processed flowers. Those are like your biggies there. The next big thing is if you do have painful periods, you want to be taking an herbal formula that can help you clear those extra estrogens. So painful periods meaning painful breasts, painful cramps, and sometimes it can be low back pain. All of those things are interrelated there. And I love to have folks working really diligently on clearing some hormones from the body, that extra estrogens. And in particular, this is estrone, your inflammatory estrogen. So you can take a supplement. There's something called diendolmethane. It is concentrated broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower. That's one option. There's also another option called calcium d -glucurate. This is something that pulls estrogens from your digestive system. In my world, I like the combination of both something called CDG estrodim. What the heck is that? It's the combination of the calcium d -glucurate to pull the estrogens from your gut and diendomethane pulls the, the estrogens from your liver and helps you to metabolize them better so that you don't have the pain. You don't have the cramping, things of that nature. There are a couple brands out there. I really like Orthomolecular's CDG Estrodim is what it's called. Don't worry, I'll put all this in the notes. I'll have a great detailed like explanation of everything I'm going through here because I don't want you to feel like you're alone in this. And by the way, I'm using resources from a couple of my friends here, <laughs> friends, if you will, um, in, in the natural medicine world. Lara Bryden has a book, The Period the period repair manual. I interviewed her. It's episode 129. If you want to go listen to that, she's awesome. And really her book talks all about what to do off birth control. So period repair manual, you can get on Amazon, you can get an audible. However, it's, it's a great book and, and it is something that I recommend to patients all the time. Now, the other side of this is working on cycle charting. And I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. And that comes from Jessica Liu and Nora Pope, who I interviewed not too long ago. I have to look. That's episode 232. If you are wanting to go back to there, they're going to talk to you about how to cycle chart because a lot of folks when coming off of birth control, we're trying to not get pregnant. We just don't want to be on the birth control anymore. And so cycle charting is key for that. So we're going to talk there. So I talked about heavy periods. I talked about what to do if you've got some acne. I also need to mention at this point that magnesium can be extremely helpful for anxiety, PMS, PMDD, having painful periods. I love magnesium and 500 milligrams minimum of magnesium glycinate. Note I said glycinate. Glycinate means good. You're not going to see crap yourself. Now I know that sounds kind of funny, but magnesium citrate, C for crap. Not that it's bad stuff. It just helps you 
go to the bathroom. So sorry for being a little dude there, but it's a great reminder of what magnesium does what? Magnesium glycinate for the cramping. Now I also will use something called cramp bark and something called Jamaican dogwood. Those two herbs are really great for helping with cramps. There's a product by a company called Vitanica that works wonders for, for cramps, and I will put that into my notes at drjcarlsandy.com. So that's an in-the-moment cramp thing as we're working to get rid of your cramps. Now the other big E here is vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 can be incredibly helpful for just signaling in the body. And dosage varies. I've had folks anywhere from 25 up to 300 milligrams a day of vitamin B6. Don't start at the 300. That is not a wise decision. You might not need that much. If you have sulfur issues in terms of processing sulfur, you might have some trouble with vitamin B6. So just keep that in mind as you're, you're processing through trying and trial and error and things of this nature. But of course, I'm always going to say, please contact a functional medicine doc, a naturopath, someone that's working in this realm to help you out so that you're not winging it. I'm here to give you what's out there. Don't wing it. This kind of stuff needs some, some guidance. You, you need a little help there. Now, if you have trouble with blood sugar and your weight is, you have trouble getting your weight down and you have sugar cravings around the period before, after, during, you might be insulin resistant. And this is where the blood sugar testing is key, but I also will sometimes use an herb called berberine. This helps with blood sugar balance. So this is an extract, berberine's an extract from Oregon grape root, and it's been found to help with regulating gut bugs, but also helping you with calming down the sugar cravings in the body because it stabilizes blood sugar for you. So if you're gonna switch to berberine, you're wanting to think about the whole foods diet, but you also want to be thinking about what can I do on a daily basis to balance my blood sugar and that means upping the protein in the diet, making sure you've got protein with every single meal and lots of veggies for flushing that fiber. Key stuff there. So especially if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome or you suspect you do, you've had cysts in the past, get the blood sugar dialed in, start your day off with protein, veggies, and a little good fat versus a carb-rich meal. It, it works wonders, just saying. So the other big thing is maybe you have the type of polycystic ovarian syndrome that you're not provoking a period. And so you're worried about coming off the birth control and not getting a period. How might you change things? To get a period, you need progesterone. When we're stressed out, the body steals progesterone. Literally, it steals the precursors to progesterone to make cortisol. So there might be two factors here. If you're super stressed out and you're not getting a period, we want to consider what can we do to help your body balance the adrenal hormones and the stress. Adrenal Health by Gaia Herbs is one of my most favorite herbal formulas to just help put things in track. There are a ton of adrenal formulas out there. That one just happens to be the one that's the easiest to get a hold of. Now, the other side of this is progesterone. How do we help you to make a little more progesterone naturally? There is an herb called Chaseberry or Vitex. You can start taking this at 1,000 milligrams, usually from mid-cycle to start of the cycle, but if you don't know where your cycle's at because you haven't had a period, you just start taking it continuously until a period is provoked. Now, you could also use bioidentical, so closest to your body's production of progesterone in a cream form or in a pill form to also provoke a period, and this is something that either you know conventional docs your your gynecologist your naturopath anyone can can help you with in this case it's not out of the realm of conventional and natural medicine it's it's all encompassing to provoke a period so progesterone would be something that i would think about in this case but i want you to go through three periods before you three cycles or three months before you officially start using the Vitex to provoke a period. And of course you wanna get your pelvic exam, you wanna get all those things checked out. So something to think about, if you didn't get a period before birth control, you started the birth control, you come off the birth control and nothing's happening, we need to look at progesterone and possibly using the, the herb chaseberry to help you in that case. You can also use something called evening primrose oil at a thousand milligrams as well as a stimulatory progesterone effect things to think about. Now, 
the bottom line here in, in everything with, with periods is we want to be thinking about knowing our cycle, knowing what's happening on a monthly basis, watching for intricacies. Because if you don't get a period right off of coming off of the birth control, we have to look for clues. Is there a middle schmerz, meaning like a little bit of a cramping midway through the month? Is there, for example, do we have cravings for carbs, sweets, salty stuff? Is it like an overt, like, I need chocolate now situation? If that's happening, you're definitely going to be magnesium deficient. Just saying chocolate is magnesium. But you're also, your, your body's giving you signals that something's happening. And you can track that. Also insomnia, constipation, diarrhea. So gut changes where your body's going to be going through a cycle can happen too. So pay attention to these little intricacies from when you stop the birth control and just go along the lines and see if you can connect any dots. Part of this is also looking at something called cycle charting. And I like to do it as in, in conjunction because getting more information about your body, but also being able to chart is key because we need to know what kind of flow is coming out of the body. Now, red flow, obviously, period, right? Chart it from the first day the period starts, that's day one of your cycle, to when your period stops, meaning blood flow stops, chart that. When do you have red flow? Then you should have dryness in between there so you're not having any flow. And then you start with mucus, cervical mucus. And this is your fertile window. From when that cervical mucus starts to ovulation, and then afterwards, you have a fertile window. You ov when you ovulate, you have three days before, three days after that you're fertile. And these are things that you can chart just by looking at that cervical mucus. It's sticky, it's stringy, it sounds kind of gross, but it, it, it's something to be very familiar with. And the more egg-like, egg whitey, stringy it is, the more fertile you are in that time frame. Checking your basal body temperature is key too because you can see if your temperature goes up in response to ovulation. So I often will have folks doing something called cycle charting. It's much different than looking at an app. Now I don't, I'm not opposed to apps. I think you can also do that as well. But the cycle charting is kind of old school. It has papers that go with it. There's a, a website called fertilityawarenessproject.ca. So it is a Canadian website and you can actually get downloadable charts on, on for this, for you to do the cycle charting. Now, if you're wanting to know more about cycle charting, I did do the episode 232 with Nora Pope and Jessica Liu. Those two gals talk all about it. They have trainings for us docs like me, naturopaths, and, and conventional docs on cycle charting. There's also the Justice Project. Um, that is, or Justice Practitioners, excuse me, and that's in Canada as well. And those folks also have more education on this. And I think it's worth checking out if you're wanting to know how can you enhance your fertility or how can you prevent pregnancy in a way that is dialed in where you're paying attention to your body really, really well. Now you might be thinking in this case, doc, I don't know if I have cervical mucus or maybe I don't produce it. Now not producing cervical mucus might mean that you're not really ovulating at all. And that would make trouble for getting pregnant. Now, it might also mean that you might be missing the window of when you're ovulating. So this is why it's key to check for that cervical mucus, because sometimes people will start to ovulate on the back end of having their period. So much earlier than that day 14, we've all been told that we're supposed to be ovulating on. Some folks are earlier, some folks are later. So this is why it's key to pay attention, because ultimately what is going to get you pregnant? Ovulation and sex three days before, after right on the peak day, that's going to get you pregnant. If you are not trying to get pregnant, those are the days you want to be abstaining from sex because obviously you don't want to get pregnant. So these are things to really, really dial in. Now there's lady comps. So these are devices that can tell you when you are ovulating, things of that nature. And, and these can be extremely useful as well. I'm not opposed to it. There's the daisy one as well. Hey, whatever suits you, just chart something. Know what is really truly happening because these apps are not 100% accurate because they're based on algorithms 
of what is average. And I really think that we need to know our periods. And if we're going to be coming off birth control, you really need to know what's happening. How long do you have your period? How heavy is it? How light is it? Do you have headaches? Do you have PMS? Do you have pain? All of these things are clues as to what's going on in your body that needs some balance, right? You can't just like, I have a lot of folks in my practice who are like, hey, what's the basic protocol for coming off of birth control? Well, the basic protocol is this. Eat as closest to nature as possible. Get the dairy out. Get the alcohol out. Get the processed sugars and like honey, maple syrup, that stuff's okay, but get the processed sugars and the white flour out. Get all that out. We're going to reduce inflammation. That's like first and foremost. Second thing is pay attention. So cycle chart. Look at all of the intricacies about your period. If you have heavy period or painful period, so breast tenderness, cramps, that's excess estrogen. So how do we get rid of excess estrogen? We can take the supplements I mentioned, the DIM or the CDG, calcium d glucurate, or you could work to try to eat two cups of the cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli family, beets or carrots, mix and match it. Do that daily to help your body naturally clear hormones out of the gut and the liver a possibility. Now, the next big thing is going, okay, maybe you don't have that, but maybe you're just not getting a period. Maybe you're having these cystic ovary pains, like things happening, cysts rupturing. You want to be thinking about, okay, do I need to consider Vitex or Chaseberry or Evening Primrose to try to help me out to balance my progesterone levels? How do we do that? Get some Dutch testing, so dried urine testing to help you to know what the heck's going on. Is it that? Is it maybe we're looking at a cortisol issue, which leads me into, are you having issues with extra acne? Are you having issues with hot flashes, sweating? This could be a cortisol imbalance. So cortisol's high, progesterone's low, you need to balance that out. Or if you're having anxiety, things of that nature. So I highly recommend getting some testing. Now, if you're like, oh, doc, I can't afford that, but I've got a lot going on in terms of anxiety, things of that nature. Ashwagandha can be extremely helpful. Now it is a caveat. If there's any thyroid issues, you do want to make sure that it does not interfere with your thyroid. But at 400 milligrams up to three times a day, ashwagandha can be really useful to help with anxiety and, and things of that nature. If it makes you tired when you take it, take it in the evening. That's perfectly fine. Now, same thing on that line, L-theanine. This is an amino acid that helps with anxiety. You can take up to 1600 milligrams a day. They come in 200 milligram pills, so you could divide it out. Now, that's an option. So those are things to be thinking about in this case. Another big thing to be thinking about, like I'd mentioned before, if you have anxiety, if you have PMDD, if you have a lot of cramping and things of that nature, you might have a magnesium or a vitamin B6 deficiency. Go get it checked out. See if that's the issue. You want to know things before you just start throwing random supplements at, at your body. Same thing with heavy periods and anemia. Let's see how anemic things are. Let's look at B12. Let's look at folate. Let's look at all that to see where your balance is in your iron stores. Those are big issues, especially if you have a lot of fatigue that happens either right before, during, or after your period. That's a biggie. Migraines are a whole nother like eight podcasts because those are tricky as well. And that is something with birth control that it, when you come off of it, you could start to see some migraine issues. But like I said before, going back to basics, let's look at it because migraines could be a, a, an issue of a B12, a folate, a B6, a magnesium, or, or some sort of anemia. So big things here. There's also Chinese herbs. I'm not going to go into that, but those are also another option that you could potentially go, go into when coming off birth control. So the bottom line here, just to summarize everything up from how to stop birth control is think about it a month ahead of time. What is my goal? 
Am I trying to get pregnant? Am I just trying not to get pregnant and get myself healthier? I don't like the side effects of birth control. Okay, great. Let's map it out how we're going to come off this birth control. First and foremost, get the diet on point. Anti-inflammatory diet. Take out the alcohol. Take out the dairy. Take out the processed sugars and carbs. That's going to go a long way. Eating closest to nature. Do whole food, whole 30 if you have to. Whatever you resonate with get the body de-inflamed before you take the birth control out next thing is looking at once you're off the birth control okay what is happening in the scheme of things did i get a period what did it look like chart it all out that way you know what day it came what day it stopped how did your symptoms go before it during it after it what's going on with flow so cervical flow did you have a couple dry days after your period stopped that's normal did you have any cervical mucus that's when you're going to be most fertile when did that cervical mucus stop and then when did that next period come and what happened in between there so all of those details are crucial to knowing what you can do and where to intervene along these lines now the other big key here to be thinking about with your periods is all right i i haven't stopped my birth control yet what can i predict keep in mind you will likely go back to whatever pattern you had before you started birth control if you didn't get a period and you just went straight on birth control it's a crapshoot sorry i don't know what to tell you but if you had a period before likely your period when you come off the birth control is going to be similar so thinking ahead of time what do i need to be dealing what do i need to work with if you had horrible painful periods that were super heavy likelihood you have estrogen elevation so start dialing in the supplements or the foods to help you to clear out that estrogen before you actually go for taking the birth control out prep yourself a month ahead of time get some testing so the dutch test especially for you folks who had painful pmse pmdd all those you know intense periods even acne i do recommend looking at the dutch test so the dried urine hormone metabolism testing because it is crucial and and it's key to helping you to kind of speed up the process of not playing around of oh maybe it's this oh maybe it's that you want to get somebody to help you with this but bottom line is test don't guess look at your metabolism factors like i said before what's going on with your blood sugar processing where is your magnesium your iron where's your thyroid at what's going on with inflammation so looking at c-reactive protein you want to know where are you at before you stop the birth control then once you stop it now it's go time and it'll take three months to really regulate things so be patient with yourself and know that the more effort you put into yourself the more you're going to see results and stress management also on top of these things super key to helping you to have that period dialed in so once you know your data start working on dialing in your routines to make them a little stress proof take your breaks during the day start your day off with a great chill routine and end your day with a great wind down routine so dial all that stuff in and you're going to notice that coming off birth control isn't so terrible yeah you're going to have ups and downs i'm not going to lie but it it can be done you can do it and get some guidance it can be a wonderful journey with with a functional medicine doc or a naturopath to help you to just start to regulate your body and take control back of your hormones all right everybody that's my spiel on how to stop birth control without a struggle i'm your host dr janine kraus you've survived another episode of the health fix i hope you all have a great day whatever you're doing thank you for listening to another episode of the health fix podcast this podcast was brought to you by blue blocks the blue light blocking glasses. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see me wearing my computer glasses. Those are the Galaxy version. They're fabulous. I have not been having headaches in my office thanks to those awful, awful overhead lights that we have. Those buggers are blah. So anyway, blue light blocking glasses, game changers for your health. Check out them at blueblocks.com.